Hi, I'm Hannah. And I'm Sam. And we are some of the musicians here at Kids Excel. Today, we're going to be talking to you about the musical staff, as well as the different note values that we have in music. So the first thing you need to understand about music is that music is its own language. Just like English or Spanish or Russian or Chinese, music is written down and can be understood by other people who understand that language. Perfect. So the first thing that we're going to learn about today is called our musical staff. Our musical staff, the main purpose of that is to be able to write down and to be able to read our music. So think of your musical staff as the notebook paper for your music. Our staff is made up of five lines and in between those five lines we have four spaces. So I have a good way to remember how many lines and how many spaces are on a staff. You kind of just use your hand and pretend that they're the lines of a staff and you have five lines and in between those five lines you have four spaces. And you can see this clearly shown with the music that we have back here. On the first line, you have five lines that run all the way across with the four spaces in between. Perfect. So every line and every space is a place where you can write a musical note. And depending on where you write your musical note on the staff, that tells us exactly what note or what pitch we'll be playing on our instrument. So the higher up your note is written on your staff, the higher the note will be. So for example, a higher note would be somewhere around here. The lower it is written on your staff, the lower your note will be. So somewhere around here. Did you notice that the first note we played was higher than the second note that we played? You're right, one of those notes was totally higher than the other. So. In order for us to be able to know what notes we're playing, we need something that's called a musical clef. So in general, we have mostly two different kinds of clefs that we use. We have what we call our treble clef, which looks like this one that we have in the back. It's that squiggly thing that you see. And we also have our bass clef. So treble means high. Treble clef is specifically for all of the higher range notes, as well as all the instruments that play higher range of notes. So, do you mean like a flute or a saxophone? Exactly. The flute and the saxophone are higher ranged instruments, so they both read off of the treble clef. Now, if treble clef means high, then that means that bass clef means low. I play an instrument that plays off of the bass clef. It's called a trombone. Other instruments that play off of the bass clef include the tuba and the baritone sax, which is the giant saxophone that you see that hangs way out over here. Exactly, nice. And you also know some instruments like band instruments, like the bass guitar, right? That's called a bass because it plays pure low notes. So now what we're gonna talk about is our time signature. And if you look on the music that we have, you're gonna notice two numbers there, four and four. That is our time signature. A time signature is going to tell us how we count our music and how to keep in time with our music. One important thing you should know about playing music with other people is that it's not a race. You don't win a prize if you get to the end first. It's about teamwork and playing together and playing at the same time and playing in time. And our time signature helps us with that. If you've been paying attention to the dance classes, You'll notice that dancers count in eights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's how dancers count their music. Well, in this case, in the time signature of 4-4, four, four, the way that we count our music is like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four. The time signature 4-4 four, four means that for every bar or every measure, there's going to be four counts in each measure. There can't be any more than four counts in each measure, and there can't be any less than four counts in each measure, which is why we count one, two, three, 
four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's a never ending loop of counting in four. So you heard me say the word measure and you're thinking, Sam, what's that? Well, a measure is another musical term that we use to identify the spots in our music that are identified by the vertical lines on our staff. Each vertical line is the start and end of a measure. That's how we know where to count. And remember, each measure has four counts. So let's go ahead and take a look at the different kinds of notes that we have on our staff. Today we'll be looking at four different kinds of notes that we have. Starting with our whole note. Our whole note is the very first note that you see up there. It's shaped like an oval like Mr. Sam is showing us right now. And this note is called a whole note because it actually takes up the whole measure. Like how Sam was talking about, our measure can carry up to four beats in it. And that means that our whole note is going to be four beats long. So you mean we hold the note out for four counts? Exactly. Our whole note is going to be a long note. So if I were to clap it, for example, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Notice how I'm holding out my note. If I were to do this, one, two, three, four, I'm not holding my whole note anymore. And that's not a whole note. Maybe they'll understand how to hold out a note better if we play it on our instruments. Let's try it. Ready? One, two, ready, and. One, two, three, four. Congratulations, you actually just read the first line of our music. Nice. If you take a look at the first line of music, you'll see that we have four measures with four whole notes, equaling a total of 16 counts. Let's try it again, shall we? One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Awesome. The next note that we're going to talk about is a half note, and you'll see it on the second line of our music. So if a whole note takes up the whole measure, and our measure is made up of four counts, how many counts do you think a half note will use? If we cut a whole note in half, we split those four counts into two counts. So now we hold out our half note for two counts. It should sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's try it with instruments. One, two, ready. Go! One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Nice. Nice. And that was two bars of half notes. Two whole measures using half notes. If you take a look at our music, you'll see that the second line is made up of four bars of half notes. So we have a total of eight half notes. We're going to go ahead and play the second bar of music now. One, two, two ready, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Good. If you don't have an instrument at home, you can clap too. Let's try it again, but this time, Miss Hannah will play the piano and I'll clap. Ready? One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Good. Nice. Now, if I were to grab my half note, which is two beats long, and I were to split that right down the middle, I'm left with one beat. This is my quarter note. Now, you might think about it and be like, quarter, maybe like a quarter in money? 
How many quarters does it take to make a whole dollar? Four. Four quarters, exactly. So four quarter notes is the same as our whole note. It's four beats long. And that's why it's called a quarter because it's a fourth of our whole note. Wow, so how do we play quarter notes? So quarter notes will be played on every single beat. Every number that you hear is a beat. So if I were to clap it, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So now that we know how to do quarter notes, let's read our third line of music, which is made up of quarter notes. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Awesome. Were you able to keep up? Cool. So we're going to go ahead and talk about our last note now, which is called an eighth note. So if you were to grab your quarter note, which is one beat, and follow the same pattern that we've been doing, which is split it in half, you're left with half a beat. Half a beat? So how do we play half a beat? So I want you to imagine that your quarter note is one big Twix. If you were to break your Twix in half, now you have two halves, right? If you put it back together, it equals your full Twix. So these two halves symbolize your eighth notes, two different eighth notes together equal your full beat. So this means that you are going to have two eighth notes in every beat. So then how would I clap eighth notes? So eighth notes are a little bit tricky. We need to learn about what we call the up beat. The up beat. The up beat. I want you to imagine that this is the floor and your other hand is a foot. Every time you say a number, your foot hits the ground, which is what we call the downbeat, like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You can go ahead and try tapping your toe with us too, along with our hands. Ready? One, One two, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four. So if this is called the downbeat, what do you think it's called when my hand is not on the floor? Is that the upbeat? It is. It's the upbeat. So when my hand is up, or when my foot is up, it's my upbeat. When we count our eighth notes, we're counting downbeats and upbeats. So we're counting one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and Mama Shark do 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 Mama Shark do do Now we're not done that. So if we were to clap our eighth note, it would sound like this. Ready? One, one and, and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and nice. Well, that wasn't too complicated. Can we try it one more time, clapping? Ready? One, two, ready, go. One, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Awesome. Good. Let's go ahead and read our final note of music, four bars of eighth notes. You ready? One. Two, ready, and one and two and three and four 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 and. So that's how you play eighth notes, huh? Wow, we're learning all kinds of stuff today. But I think we're ready to read the whole sheet of music. Hmm. What do you think? Starting with the whole note. Yeah. So we're going to go whole note, half 
half note, quarter note, eighth note. You ready? Here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. Alright, give yourselves a pat on the back. You just read an entire sheet of music. That was awesome! We hope you enjoyed our lesson today and that you learned about the staff as well as all the different kinds of notes that we have. We hope you had a lot of fun and we'll see you again soon. Bye!